everybody. Welcome to the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. Rose here, and I'm here to present another beautiful necklace set for you. Summer's coming. I don't know when you're watching this video, but for us, summer's on its way. And that's why I brought out the mermaid glass. Isn't this awesome? This is really hard to get a good photo of or a good video of because it's like, it's like these beads are glowing from within. They're just ah, yummy and ah. And then I've added to that a hema-like, treated, coated hema-like pendant and these cool ear cuffs. We're going to start, start off with this great earring. And you notice it's not your traditional earring. It's an ear cuff that slides over the top of your ears. And of course, to it, we've added the great mermaid glass dangles. And we also have a hema-like half-drilled bead on it to match the pendant in the necklace. So let's get this started. I'll put those aside. And we, you get the ear cuffs look just like this when you get them. This hole here, this divot, is intended for a uh, an undrilled or a half-drilled bead. I am using the half-drilled hema-like bead. Ooh, and didn't that turn out well? There's the hole, and it's showing up at the top. We want that on the underside. Well, unless that's the look you're looking for. Uh, I'm going to use the DevCon two-part epoxy. It's really my favorite. It's a five-minute epoxy, so it cures in just five minutes, and we only need a tiny bit. So, Be careful when you're uh, dealing with the DevCon. It has a shaped top so that when you put it back on, you'll put the top on in the same orientation and not accidentally get your chemicals mixed. If you accidentally mix the chemicals, even in just putting the top on wrong, you can make all your product cure inside the tube. So I take the top off. I'm going to put a tiny squirt, not very big at all, to do these two little half drilled beads. A little bit of the side A and a little bit of the side B. You want equal parts. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. A little equal blob of each. And I'm putting the top back on carefully in the same orientation I took it off. Set that aside. And this can sit here and rest all day if I wanted it to. It's not going to cure until you mix the two parts together. So grab my handy dandy toothpick and mix this chemical together. Um, every molecule has to meet a molecule of the other guy, so every A needs to meet a B when it's all fully mixed, and um, it's pretty foolproof stuff. This is wonderful glue because it holds super well, and it, a lot of people are intimidated by two-part epoxies. It is not intimidating at all. They're just super easy to work with, and the best part of all, in five minutes, I can be wearing these earrings. Well after I make all the loops for the beads that are going to drop down. Okay, so that's enough. Enough mixing. I find as I'm mixing it, if I see it, if I can see it, it's like when I first start mixing, it gets kind of cloudy. And when I know it's ready, it's clear. So I put just a little bit in the hole. I don't want so much that it's going to sploosh over everywhere. So. I'm looking for where the hole is. I want that hole to be on the downside, so I'll pop it right in there. Spooshed over a little. That's okay. And I pick up another one. Look for its little half-drilled hole here. I know you're there somewhere. There it is. Found it. Okay, and it goes down. Ta-da! Now, was that intimidating? No way. You can do this. I'm going to set those aside and let that get curing. I will come to the necklace. This is really easy. It's just basic stringing, but I am going to start by putting the ice pick bail on this pendant right here. Some people find these intimidating too. Not to worry. These are awesome. They've got little teeth inside here, and those little teeth are going to clamp down on the little hole in the pendant. Now I might need to open that up just a little bit with my pliers. Just open those little legs up a little bit there so it'll fit over here. And I will slip it in through the front hole first because that's the place you want to make sure you don't cause any scratches. So I usually put the front part of my ice pick bale in first. And then if I'm strong enough, sometimes I can just use my fingers like that and close that up. But when in doubt, I will double check with a little gentle squeeze. 
going to make sure I don't scratch my pendant or my bale. So I'm trying to be really gentle in closing that up. And there, that pendant is secure on the bale. Ta-da-da-da! -da -da. There, we have a mermaid pendant. Here we go. We've got all these beautiful, I love these mermaid beads. They're so glowy and lovely. Um, and you can string those on in any order you like. Um, I had a pattern here, but if you don't want to follow that pattern, don't follow that pattern. And I'm going to go to town starting from one end, work my way around. There we go. So that's our basic stringing. Let's get these beads out of the way. We have a necklace. All we have to do now is crimp the ends. I'm using a sterling silver crimp. I know this is a fairly inexpensive bracelet, but I mean necklace. Um, but I really like the sterling silver crimps. They are much more malleable than any kind of plated metal. And uh, so they make, to me, they make a stronger and more sturdy crimp. So the first thing I do is slide the crimp on. And then I'm going to put on an AccuGuard. I love the AccuGuards too. It helps protect your AccuFlex and makes your jewelry design probably last longer because it's like a little sleeve, a little metal sleeve that goes over the top of your AccuFlex and protects it. And then back down through the crimp bead. There we go. I have left a one inch tail. Make that all nice and tight and snug and hold it there in your fingers. And use my crimping pliers. This is a plier with several little indentations in it. That's where the crimping happens. All you electricians out there have probably been using these all your lives. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the center notch. I know what the best angle to see that is. Into the center notch and give it a little crush. And that turns that crimp into um, a little smile shape, sort of halfway folded over. Now I'm going to go into the end notch. And I'm going to crush this the other way, fold it in half, so to speak, to make a nice secure crimp that's not going to come undone. And then I can hide this tail inside of my beads. And that's just an a little added security. This doesn't work for all beads because not all beads have a big enough hole, but these do. So, so there's my tail is inside of there. And I can pull this all the way down, make sure that tail didn't slide out while I was manipulating things. And now here on the other end, now I can cut my AccuFlex without wasting a bunch. I like to have about a couple inches to work with. A couple inches on the end for the crimp bead. Crimp bead first, the AccuGuard, that little protective sleeve, back down the other side of the AccuGuard, and through my crimp bead. Now here's a trick that not everybody knows about. That tail, also put your beads over the top of that tail. It'll add strength to your design. It'll also prevent having that little tiny stubby bit of a tail you cut off scratching your neck. I don't know about you ladies, but that has happened to me a lot of times with necklaces. Little tiny stubs sticking out there that scratches your neck all the time you're wearing that. Oh, make it crazy. So I pull all that tight. Still got the tail sticking out the side, but I've got my my crimp cover up there. Also want to make sure when you're crimping, they don't have a whole lot of kinks in this because that'll leave you empty spaces. So make sure this is kind of smooth so that you don't um, kink up your, your AccuFlex and end up with empty gaps. Okay, then using the middle notch, I'll give it a crush. Then I'll turn it and I'll put it through the end notch to finish the fold in half. And then I can nip off this last little bit of AccuFlex. I love these clippers too for this type of thing because I can get in so tight spaces right there. That tiny little space gets the last of that AccuFlex off of there. 
These are a pair of Lindstrom clippers that I have used to death. <laughs> there we go. And there you have it. No rough edges, nothing that's going to drive you nuts while you're out there swimming. I don't know if I'd swim in this. <laughs> while you're on the beach, let's say. Okay, now, this is not bad, but you want a really professional look, you're going to put a crimp cover over that crimp. It's not lovely, it's not ugly, but it's not lovely. So we're going to take a crimp cover. Um, this is like a bead that's kind of been split open and opened up so that it can go over the top of that crimp bead. And then with a little manipulation, I use my chain nose pliers, you can close that crimp cover down. You do this sort of slowly and gently, and you try and make the seams of that bead meet up. I do a little massaging. I'll hit the right side, then I'll hit the left side, then I'll hit the right side. And you can get a nice round looking. You can see the seam, but just barely. And who's going to look at the back of your neck that closely? I mean, really, folks. Okay. And then I'll put a crimp cover on the other side. Same thing, slip it over the crimp, give it some gentle massaging. I know a lot of people have trouble with this. I'm a massager. Just take some time. You will get a nice round crimp cover to give you a finished end on that. And all we lack now is a clasp. I hope you all know how to open a jump ring because that's what we're going to do. Twist it open, add my clasp, twist it shut, and again, jump ring, twist it open, grab the other half of the clasp, oh, oh I tried to make it look too easy, there we go. And put it on the other end. If you like super security, I usually do, you could even use the second jump ring because you've got big enough holes here to do that with. But we have finished this beautiful mermaid necklace. Okay, so back to these earrings we were working on. Uh, as we did before, we added the, uh, the little half drill bead. It's all secure now. And while you were gone, I also made these links, these drops that I'm going to use. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how. Not to worry. Um, this is a simple loop. A lot of you have seen us do simple loops at Fire Mountain Gems. And it starts with a head pin. And I'm going to put a head pin on the pink one. Gosh, I think my glasses need cleaning. I can't find it. There we go. So I put the pink one on the head pin. I make a 90 degree bend, and then I cut off the excess wire, which is going to be about that much. If you make it too much, no worries. You can just cut a little bit more later. If it's just right, perfect. If it's too short, get another head pin. Okay, I'm going to trim that off, being careful not to fling that extra piece of wire at anyone. Grab my round nose pliers, grip the very end of that, make sure you can get an angle on that. Grip the very end of it, and then roll that back over the top of the jaw. Take the plier out, put it back in with the bottom jaw there, and finish rolling it around. And that makes a simple loop. And then, for the other parts of this, I'm going to use an eye pin. It already has a loop in it, and so you don't have to do that one. The hard part is, you have to try and make one that matches it. So put that eye pin onto the blue, the blue bead, make a 90 degree bend, trim off the excess, just like before. Take your round nose pliers, roll that back, reposition and roll again. And now we have a link, one more. Hopefully you'll have it by then, three times, with the dark blue bead, 90 degree bend, 
trim the excess. Roll it back. And again. Okay, so that's the parts we need to make this little drop. All we have to do now is connect them. And just like a jump ring, you twist open the loop to add the second bead. And twist the loop closed. Ta-da! Twist open the loop, add the second bead, twist the loop closed, And then the last step to finishing this earring is to put all these drops onto the ear wire. So I've got some jump rings. I've already opened them up. And you see this ear hot wire has, oh gosh, a bunch of loops. I'm not going to use all the loops. Don't need all the loops. It's pretty enough with just if the ones I put on. So I'm going to do every other one and just leave those extra loops vacant. Consider them a decorative element. So I take all these drops I prepared before. And again, if you don't put them in this exact order, no worries. Make it the way you like them. And I'm going to put these in every other loop. One more dangle. How easy is this? You don't even need to have pierced ears to wear them. So, there you have it. A set of beautiful mermaid earrings to go with a very tropical mermaid necklace and you get to be the mermaid hope you have a great summer hope you enjoy this set thank you for joining me at the fire mountain gems and beads jewelry making studio happy beading mm -hmm.